All right, all right. Uh, this is one of our new members, church. Uh, she has uh, uh, wanted to join Cedar Valley Church of Christ, and this is her lovely family. And if you would, why don't you introduce them to us, please? The oldest is Christian. He'll be 15. This is Isaiah. He's 13. And this is Brian. He's 10 or 11. And this is Gabriel. He's 10. We definitely don't want to get the age wrong here. All right. Uh, on the count of three, we want to welcome Sister Monica Nash. One, two, three. Welcome Sister Monica Nash to the Church of Christ the Cedar Valley. As a token of our thank you, we just want to make sure you have this. Go ahead. I think the devil's mad right now. We are right with that. Got a few announcements this morning. I uh, want to make mention to the choral ministers. Uh, adult chorus rehearsal today uh, will be from 2 to 4.45 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, the Golden Saints ministry, reminding everyone, the Golden Saints and the non-members who are attending uh, the Promise Play at Glen Rose, Texas, this Friday, September the 7th. A uh, band will leave Cedar Valley Church Christ at 5 o'clock p.m., return after the play. So make sure that you have any question or concern about that, meet with brother or sister Jenkins. Uh, they will uh, fill you in about that. Uh, lastly, we're, uh, I'm here to remind you about the church picnic. Uh, it's going to be coming up. It's coming Saturday, uh, September the 8th. Now, the grand thing about that is that if y'all think you can cook, how many of y'all think you can cook a good cake here? Because we're going to have a contest, y'all. So, so if you think you got the, the magic touch, you better bring it out on that day. Uh, we want to see what, what, what it's all about. I, I hope I'm available because I want to test every one of them. <laughs> Amen. So we want to remind you uh, that's going to be held at the proper part uh, from 11 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. If you need more details about the address, uh, where it's going to be or anything, get with Brother Hanks. Uh, he'll be right. Hanks will be able to. Uh, I'll let you know more about it and what you need to do. So, And also, a uh, reminder, uh, every family needs to bring a dessert uh, when you come at that event as well. So make sure you put that on your calendar. Uh, don't forget this time of Saturday. It's also in the bulletin that you can get your information. Uh, we're working on a very uh, slim skeleton. Everybody seems to be out of town for Labor Day. Uh, thank God that uh, 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 we are able to do those things, uh, that we live in a nation that we can be able to celebrate things. should not. 
not seek anything than you first. Help us, Lord, to have the faith that we need, Lord. Help us to have the things that we need in our lives, Father God, that will help continue to direct our lives towards you. Father, go with those who are standing. They're standing in need of whatever they may be standing in need of, Father God. We know uh, that there's many things that are challenging us in this world today. We know that there's a lot of people that are in the hospital dealing with illnesses. Uh, those may be incarcerated. Those dealing with legal issues. Just family problems all together. Father, we know the devil's just busy. He's just rapping. And Father, we just know that you are the way maker. You can bring about the peace that we need to deal with these things. So we just ask you, Lord, at this time, come to us and help us, Lord, to understand that uh, we, we don't need to be uh, bothered by those things. Just uh, allow us to give it to you, Lord, and just know and have faith that you will have it. And we just pray for those on the road, Father God, those who are traveling, uh, that you give them safe guidance. Uh, help us, Lord, to continue on with the work of this church. And just continue, Lord, just work in all of our lives, Father God. And when we find ourselves, Lord, just in doubt of whatever it may be, allow us, Lord, to know that we have a way to come to you and to have you to be our rescue of all things. We pray this in your holy, most perfect name. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Good morning, hallelujah, glory now, hallelujah, well I've been running ever, ever since I made a star, oh, and you know that my days are, and Jesus gonna make my, oh, don't you know that his love is bubbling over in my heart, yes, in Come on and sing it, hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Well, I've been running ever since I made a star. Oh, don't you know that my days are? And Jesus gonna make my. Oh, don't you know that his love is bubbling? Don't you know that his love is above every day that his love is bubbling over in my heart, oh, in my, come on everybody sing it high, oh, glory, hallelujah, well, I've been running ever since I made a start. And don't you know that my days King Jesus gonna make my Oh, don't you know that his love is a bubbly Every day you know his love is a bubbly All the day you know his love is a bubbly Over in my heart Yes, in my My Jesus is Jesus is coming soon Morning, morning or night or noon, many will, many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound, and all of the dead, righteous meet in the sky, going where no one. Come on, y'all, heavenward bound. Oh, my Jesus is, my Jesus is coming soon, morning or night. Many will meet their dooms. Trumpets will sound. And all of the dead in Christ shall rise. Righteous meet in, righteous meet in the sky. Going when no one dies. Mm, I'm heavenward bound, heavenward bound. I tried to throw it in there, guys. It's so good. It's all good. All right. We got heavens on the other side of the which we have scripture and prayer. Heavens on the other side, scripture and prayer. That was a hard mix, but I sure appreciate y'all. Heavens on the other side, oh, heavens on the other side. You know that heavens on the other the side, oh, heaven's on the uh, the side, you know that I will make it, I will make it. Come on, do that again, basis. 
Sopranos, y'all get ready. The side old head. Buttons on the uh, the side old head. Put it in your head. Altos, put it in your head. Tennis, get it in your head. Because I'm not going to start one, two, and three. We're going to come all in together. Buttons on. All right now. The side you know that I will make it. Oh, oh, come on in heaven. Mm. Oh, 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 heaven. It's on the other side. Don't you want to go to heaven? It's on the other side. Well, make it on. Oh, I said, a heaven. It's on the other side. Don't you want to go to heaven? It's on the other side. Well, we got to work real hard so we can make it on home. Hey, I said, one of these mornings, it won't be long. You're going to look for me and I'll be gone. I'm going up yonder where the singing and shout ain't nobody and nobody's going to put me out. Oh, I, oh, I, I'm going to make it on home. Don't you want to go to heaven? It's on the other side. Don't you want to go to heaven? It's on the other side. Come on. Well, we've got to work real hard so we can make it on home. I said again, y'all. Hey, I said oh, one of these mornings, it won't be long. You're going to look for me. And I'll be gone, I said, I'm going up yonder to sing and shout. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna put me out. Oh, oh I, oh, oh I, I'm gonna make it on home. I said, oh, oh I, oh, oh I, I'm gonna make it on home. Well, you know I'm going to make it on home side. Our scripture reading for this morning will be taken from Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 5. That's Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 5. from our 
our sleep and you told us to get out. I've allowed you one more time. And Father, we want to say thank you. We pray this morning, oh Lord, first Lord, we come, I come this morning asking you, oh Lord, to lend an ear. Hear me, Father. Hear us this morning. Hear our cry. Father, things are going on in this world. Things that's not pleasing, O oh Lord, in thy sight. And we come asking you, O oh Lord, to touch it. Lay your hands upon the situations that's going on in this world. Father, you're looking down upon us. And we come asking you this morning, O oh Lord, to lay your hands on each and every soul that's gathered in this place. Each and every soul that's hurting in their bodies and in their minds. Each and every soul, O oh Lord, that don't know what to do. Each and every soul, O oh Lord, that have sinned. Each and every soul we come, Father, asking you to take control of our lives. We come this morning, O oh Lord, knowing that you are our buckler. You are our shield. And we just come asking you, Lord, to fill us with the Spirit. Fill us with the Spirit, O oh Lord, that we may walk in the Spirit. Lord, it's all about you. It's not about us. And we come this morning, O oh Lord, asking you to look down upon our minister. Look down upon Brother Bailey. Strengthen him, Father, in his body. Strengthen him in his mind. Build a hedge around his family that they may be able to stand. Build a hedge around the elders. Build a hedge around the deacons. Build a hedge, O oh Lord, around us, O oh Lord, that we may walk right and talk right and live a life that is pleasing in thy sight. We come this morning, O oh Lord, asking you to go to the White House. We come asking you to go there to touch that place, to touch the people that's trying to change the truth and make it alive. Lord, but I'm going to ask you this morning to have mercy upon that place. Have mercy upon all of us that we may understand, O oh Lord, that you're God and you're God alone. And it's you, O oh Lord, that we give the praise. It's you, O oh Lord, that we come thanking you this morning for bringing us, for feeding us, for clothing us, for allowing us to drive your automobiles up and down these dangerous roads. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon our children. O oh Lord, that they go to school up and down dangerous places in this world. Be with them, O oh Lord. Guide them and keep them safe. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do in our lives. Strengthen, Brother Bailey, Lord. Be with him. Allow him to stand. This hour, this minute, we're asking in our Son Jesus' name. Amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah. We're going to sing hallelujah. Bye. And by oh now how the ransom singers will together lift their hand 
Oh, we're gonna sing. We're gonna sing. Oh, by and oh, 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 what love, what joy when we we get said. Oh, we're gonna rest beneath. We're gonna rest beneath the cloudless. Oh, oh, in, in that, in that, that land where saints never. Oh, 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 we're gonna sing. We're gonna sing. Well, by and by, and when the still gather, we'll together sweetly sing. Oh, we're gonna sing, holly. We're gonna sing, hallelujah. By and by, well, now in that land. In that land where saints never die Said, oh, we're gonna sing We're gonna sing Well, by and Oh, 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 what love What joy Oh, when we, we get home Oh, we're gonna rest beneath We're gonna rest beneath the cloudless In, 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 in that land that land where the saints never oh 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 we're gonna sing we're gonna sing well by and by i love to praise him say i love to praise his i love to praise him well, I love to praise. Oh, I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to, I love to praise His holy. Oh, you know that He is my rock, y'all. He is my, my rock, my rock, my. And oh, you know that He is the wheel and He is the in the middle. And no, oh, you know him never, him never, no, never, never. For oh, he's just a jewel. Well, that I, yeah, hey, come on and sing hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I love to pray. Come on, let's sing hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to pray. Come on, let's sing hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I love to praise his name. I love to, I love to praise his holy. Hey, you know that he is my rock, my rock, my rock, my rock, my rock, my rock, my. And oh, you know that he is the wheel in the middle. And oh, you know he never, 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 no, no, he never, never. For oh, he's just a jewel. Well, that I hey, come on and sing hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I love to praise. Come on, let's sing hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love. Come on, let's sing hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Well, I love to praise his name. I love to, I love to praise. I love to, I love. Come on, let's praise him. I love to praise his holy name. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. We come to a part of service this morning, which is uh, collecting. I'll be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and 1 and 2 is the verses. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I give an order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in the store, and God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Let's give it this time. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Oh, 
my God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I am weak and who raises holy name. Oh, my God is awesome. service which is communion I have a reading from Matthew chapter 26 26 and the following and they were eating as they were eating Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And let's pray for the bread and cup. Our Father God in heaven, once again comes to your throne of grace. We thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for the lovely uh, blessings you give each and every day. We thank you for the cup, the reputation of your blood, and the bread, the reputation of your broken body. We just pray, Father God, that we examine ourselves and find ourselves worthy to take up this bread and cup. In Jesus' name we do pray. That's all we got to say, amen. Amen.
Let's get moving. Say amen. amen. Let's give Brother West another hand. Another hand. 
Amen. It takes a lot of courage to stand up here and lead you guys. Amen. We're going to sing a little bit of I Keep Falling in Love with Him over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the oh, 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 oh what a love between my God and I. I keep falling in love with him. Over and over and over, over again. Lord, he keeps blessing me over and over, over and over and over and over again. Well, he keeps blessing me over and over and over and over, over again. Lord, he gets sweeter. Sweeter as the days go by Oh, what a love, love between my God and I I keep falling in love with Him Over and over and over, over again Well, and He keeps cleansing me Over and over, over and over and over Over again, well, He keeps cleansing me Oh over and over, over and over and over and over again. Well, he gets sweeter and sweeter as. Oh, what a love, love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over and over again. I said, I keep falling in love with him over. And over and over and over, over again. And I said, I keep falling in love with the law. Over and over and over and over and over again. Well, uh, he gets sweeter and sweeter as I day goes up. I said, uh, Oh, what a love. Oh, well, I keep on falling in love with him over. Over and over and over again. Amen, amen. Well, come on down here with y'all. That's all right. Now, we can't bring Brother Bailey up like that. We're going to try one today. We're going to sing a little bit all night, all day. The angels were watching over me. Do y'all believe that? All right. All night we're singing all, all day. I know the angels are watching over me, my Lord. We're singing all, all night, singing all day. Well, angels are watching over me. Sing it again, said all night. I know it was all, all day. I know the angels are watching over me. Me, my Lord, we're singing all night, singing all day. I know the angels are watching over me. Well, and I went to the church house uh, where I used to pray. And the angels are watching over me, my Lord. My soul got a happy and I stayed all day. Said the angels watching over and we sing and sing all night, singing all day. I know it was an angel watching over me, my Lord. We're singing all night, singing all day. Well, the angels are watching over me, and amazing grace, how sweet the sound it was. An angel, well. I once, I once was lost, but I think I found it was an angel watching over. They were watching, said it's all night, singing all day. I know an angel was watching over me, my Lord was singing all, all night, singing all day. Well, the angels are watching over. One more time we're singing all night I know it was all day I know the angels are watching over 
be my lord sing it all night and it was all day i know when angels watching over me my lord man i'm gonna sing a little bit of harvest time is that all right stand to your feet stand to your feet i'm gonna sing a little bit of harvest time i'm gonna throw brother bailey on the spot but that's all right he gonna catch it Oh Lord, I've come, Lord, I'm here to receive my blessing. I'm patiently awaiting. Well, and I know for the harvest, the harvest season now. Oh Lord, I got the Hebrews 11 and a 1. Lord, the kind of thing to know that my blessing, well, it needs to mind on my Oh Lord. Well, I said, Lord, I've come, oh Lord, I've, and I'm here to receive, to receive my, and I'm patiently awaiting, wherefore well, I know that the harvest, the harvest is, oh Lord, I got the Hebrews, 11 and 1, with the faith to know that my, I know that it's mine, oh mine, oh Lord, well, don't you know that I'm standing on your promise, Lord, I'm existing on your word, everything, everything that I speak, Lord, I believe that you'll give it to me, yeah, yeah. It's the Father's real good pleasure. All his kingdom, come on and get in line. Lord, and it's mine, yeah. Oh, mine. Oh, Lord. Well, don't you know that I've come, oh, Lord. And I'm here to receive. I patiently waited, patiently waited for the harvest. Oh, you know I got the Hebrews. I got the Hebrews eleven and one. Oh, the kind of faith I know, I know that it's mine. Said it's mine, mine, all mine. I got the heat losing heaven and war. Faith and all my blessings shall come. He's mine.
So, Aretha's funeral was the longest funeral I ever seen in my life. So y'all shouldn't say nothing this morning, right? Good morning. Once again, God has blessed us to be in this place. And we have had a wonderful time thus far, Brother Wes and Brother uh, Goffney. We appreciate the way in which you have sang, led us in hymns with the Spirit. And I pray that you have sang with the Spirit as well as with the understanding. And I hope we all understand something today that this is just a collective gathering. And I pray that we have worshipped God daily and we've allowed ourselves to be led and be under the influence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I'm so thankful to God for Cedar Valley Church of Christ. Uh, I hope you are too. A place that I love dearly to my heart that God has blessed us to have a place where we can come in fellowship and peace and in love and in unity. A place where we can grow and a place where we can continue to come to an understanding of what God has for all of our lives. Uh, I believe that uh, I have changed by being at this place. I've grown and I pray that that is your aim as well. Uh, all of us are in the process of still becoming what Christ wants us to be. No, none of us can say that we have arrived or we've, or we've, we've made it, uh, but we are striving for that excellence. We are pressing toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And to our visitors, if this is your first time visiting with us, we want to let you know that we're glad to have you and our doors are always open to you. And you're welcome here at Cedar Valley Church of Christ. We know we have so many who are out traveling uh, for the holidays, we know we have some who have come in traveling, but nevertheless, you and, you're here and I'm here, and God's here, and so we want to lift up his name high this morning. If you would, turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, we want to ask again that you are mindful of our Bible classes on Wednesday night. Next Saturday will be our church picnic. I believe, Brother Campbell, I think I'm, my football team is 7-1. and one. Brother Jackson, I think, over the past eight years, so if you want to play a little football... Uh, if you want to eat some food, play a little basketball, play some, y'all play dominoes and uno and uh, pies and cakes and uh, just enjoy the fellowship, come on out next week. It's a good time. I, th- I believe we as Christians ought to spend more time together outside of these church clothes, not outside of these church clothes, but outside of these church walls and in your normal clothes. Uh, some of y'all might misunderstand what I was trying to say right there. Uh, but outside of your church clothes, in your normal clothes, uh, we ought to spend some more time with each other. Uh, and so uh, it's good to see all of you, get all, all my, my friends and see my friends from Arkansas here this morning. I see Brother, Brother Narleski Wire, good to have him. And there's so many faces. I don't know, I don't always see everybody when I'm up here. Uh, so excuse me if I don't see you and you're a guest. And sometimes we have people who are guests who come to visit us. And we don't see them until it's over. So if you're a guest, please hang around so we can be able to identify you and encourage you. So come out to the church picnic in great numbers. Bring our kids. We usually have bounce houses, uh, all type of things that, that we, can, we can do. Uh, and it's just important that we take the time out to have, have fellowship one with another. And pray that you come back tonight as well as we will have another lesson. And we'll continue our day after we get back from the homecoming at, at Dallas West. We're going to try to go over there and support them uh, here uh, today. Our text this morning is from Luke chapter uh, 17, and I'm going to start off, uh, and I've been thinking uh, over the past few weeks, and as we talked about uh, two weeks ago about the chains, we were talking about our relationship with God, what we find ourselves tied to, and then last week we were talking about faith. We want to encourage you about faith, that you have to just grab the shovel, dig the ditch, and I hope that some of you did some digging last week that you prepared and you made room for what God wanted to bless you with, what God had in store for you. Today, I want to do a little bit of relationship rescue. And what I mean by that is all of us have relationships in our lives. Uh, I don't care who you are, uh, whether, you're, whether you're young or whether you're old. You have a relationship with your teacher if you're a student. You have a relationship with your parents. You have a relationship with your siblings. Uh, if you are a child, you have a relationship with your husband or your wife. You have a relationship with your best friend relationship with co-workers. Relationships are just part of life. Matter of fact, if you look at the Bible, I see an underlying theme of relationships. It's about God's re- how God relates to man. Uh, God loved man enough that he gave his only begotten son for us uh, to demonstrate his love for us. God desires that we would love one another as he has loved us. 
Uh, he desires that the husband uh, love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. It's all about relationship. He who does not know love does not know God, for God is love. Uh, and God is teaching us that we have, to, we have to get to how can a man say he loved God and hate his neighbor? It doesn't work like that. And what God is constantly trying to teach us is that we have this vertical praise upon our lips, but we have a difficult time, this horizontal, vertical praise. We have this horizontal, is, horizontal issues in our lives where we're not able to uh, relate to people. We say things such as, I don't like folk. I can't deal with folk. I can't talk to nobody. And I'm just an introverted person. And all these things we make or we use as excuses for us not getting along and having healthy relationships in our lives. I've learned that you don't always have to get along with everybody all the time. Uh, that's unrealistic to think that, that you're going you're gonna to have disagreements in your life, but, but, but the Bible teaches us to live peaceably with all men, if possible, to live peace. Don't be at war with anybody. And, and this morning, uh, I want to uh, use a topic or use it for a title, Building a Fence, Building a Fence. I, I preached this sermon a while back, a long time ago, but I, I like to revisit sermons, and I look back, this was a couple years ago, but I'm going to do it a different way. Uh, and as I've gone back to look at it, and I often see within the church, and, and, and I deal with a lot of people, and some of you uh, deal with a lot of people who are often easily, easily and often offended. Uh, and uh, offense comes from a Greek word, scandalon, which means uh, to fall into a snare or uh, to, to a trap. In other words, you think about a noose. A noose is what they used to uh, uh, use to, to hang people and lynch people. And it, it, it really says to fall in some kind of, of trap. Uh, when you think of offense, uh, Jesus, in the text in which Jesus was talking to his disciples, uh, he was talking to them about uh, understanding that offense is going to be a part of their ministry. Offense is going to be a part of their walk with him, that someone is going to offend you along the way. Uh, but it's not a question or a matter if you will be offended. The question is, what will you do when those offenses are directed at you? Uh, how do you handle those offenses? How do you process those offenses? So he begins by saying... Uh, that offenses are impossible. He says, it is impossible that offenses will come. But he says, woe unto him through whom they come. In other words, he said, just make sure that you're not the one doing all of the offending. Uh, make sure you're not the one that's constantly putting your foot in your mouth. Make sure you're not the one that's causing your brother or your sister to stumble by not being able to control your tongue. Maybe you're the one that's engaged in gossip and slander and all of the things which, which, which tear down relationships. Maybe you're the one because you got some anger issues in your life. You had daddy issues. You had mama issues. You had family issues. Maybe you were the one that was abused. Maybe you were the one that still hurt. Maybe you're the one that's still resentful. And the only way uh, that you can, uh, you, you can get rid of some of that stuff is you got to take it out on people. And we got this habit about taking things out uh, on the people that are closest to us. Because I've learned that happiness for some people hurts. Some people don't like to be happy uh, because it's easy to walk around and make an excuse for why I'm mad and I'm upset. And, and we talked about this this morning in my Sunday school class uh, the, when, when Paul says be anxious for no thing, be anxious for nothing and the peace of God. How does one know? That's the question on the table this morning in their life if they have the peace of God or not. The peace of God is a peace that passes all understanding. Jesus said in John chapter 14, uh, the world did not give you this peace, this peace that comes from God. It's an eternal peace. It's an everlasting peace. And he didn't just say a, a, a peace that, that's like God or a peace that's near God. He said a peace that comes from the very God of heaven. You've heard me say this before when Paul says, and my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches. If Jeff Bezos or Bezos, the owner of Amazon, if he said, I'm going to give you some money according to my net worth, uh, that, that, that check ought to have a couple of zeros in it. Uh, but if he says, I'm going to give you some money from my net worth, he can give you $5, he can give you a dollar. So when God says, uh, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to open up a window from heaven and I'm going to bless you. And when Paul says God is going to supply all your needs according to his riches, he's saying that this is the God who owns a cattle of a thousand hills. This is the creator of the universe of heaven and earth. And surely if God can uh, keep the planets from running into each other and if God uh, can, can, can wake up six billion people and, and keep us all operating and, and if God can die on the cross for our sins and if, if he can do all of these things for us, surely he can deal with your little problems. 
And what happens when you begin to worry about these offenses that come in your life, uh, worrying, I believe that worrying is just worship of your problem. It's just you begin to worship your problems. You begin to say that all the things that are going on in your life, all of the stuff that has been said to you, all of these things, you got some hurt that you just can't get over because in essence your problem is bigger than the God whom you worship. But I've learned that I serve a big God and God desires for me to be a big person. And then some of us in here today have got to become the bigger person because we're dealing with some small-minded folks. And there's some people around us that are petty, there are some people around us. You know, when you petty, you'll miss out on some big stuff like funerals of United States senators. Yeah, yeah, your pettiness, your pettiness will cause you to miss out on a lot of stuff all because you can't get it together. Uh, and look what he says. He says, uh, verse number three, take heed to yourself. And I'm going to show you this in a second. We always worrying about everybody else. I can't control your tongue. I can't control your eye rolls. I can't even control what you do, what you give me, and what you, what you take away from me. He says, you gotta, you got to keep, same thing Paul told the, the elders in Acts chapter 20, take heed to yourself first, then the flock. How can I look after you when I'm not well myself? And I've learned this when you're dealing with human relationship. That, have you ever been around somebody who's always trying to fix you and they've broken themselves? How are you going to be broke and trying to fix my issues? I want you to look in the mirror at yourself. I want you to go back and examine your past. I, I want you to ask yourself, am I right with God? Is my spirit together? Am I that person that I'm trying to call you to be? And, and what happens is all these offenses build on top of the years, on top of years. And then what happens is resentment. They lead to resentment and they lead to anger. And then they lead to rebellion and wrath. And the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And if you're here this morning and you're angry and you're upset and you got this stuff on your heart that's not right uh, with God and you're still mad at your mom about what she did or didn't do, still mad at your cousin, you're still mad at your husband, looking at him right now, you can't stand his sorry so-and-so and you're just mad at the preacher and you're just frustrated and you're mad at the church because I put in a benevolence request and they didn't get well I, and we're just mad, 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 angry, angry, angry and our lives are not spent in worship and service and sacrifice but they are spent in building up a fence. And I'm going to tell you how to let some of that stuff go here in a second. Then he says, and if he trespasses against you, if your brother trespasses against you, rebuke him. Now, some of us have a misinterpretation of what it means to rebuke. That don't mean cuss him out. Rebuke him is tell him or her what they have done to you. You would be surprised from where I sit how many Christians have been offended have yet never walked across the aisle to tell that person who offended them how what they did made them feel. You'd be surprised how many people were married to one another and lay down in the bed and turn their backs toward one another. One sleeps in one room and one sleeps in the next room and there's one saying, what's wrong with your sweetheart? Nothing. I know it's something wrong with you. It's nothing. Never told them what's bothering you. Day after day, never able to properly communicate because if you didn't see communication in your house, if nobody ever taught you how to communicate, how do you know how to communicate? You think that the way you get your way is that same stuff you were doing in childhood, manipulation. If I ignore you, then I'm going to show you that I'm in control of this thing. There's nothing worse than you talking to somebody and they hanging up the phone on you. Have you ever had the phone hung up on you? I have. It feels good, don't it? No, it don't. <laughs> you got to swallow your pride because you want to call them back, but then you realize they've already blocked your number. Yeah, he says offenses will come and I want these words to ring through your minds and in your hearts all week. Jesus said it. Offenses are going to come. It is impossible for you to avoid the fence. Absolutely impossible. Someone says, I don't want to go to church because I want to get offended. Don't go to church. There's not a single church you can go to in this country that you might not get offended at. I said, I want to get married because I don't ever want to argue. There's not a single marriage that you won't get in that you will never disagree. 
That's not a single job that you won't go to that there's somebody on the job that you don't mesh well with. You don't like every one of your kids all of the time. There's no such thing as an ideal situation. And we work at things. People say things work themselves out. That's a lie. Things don't work themselves out. People work things out. God has placed that in us. God has charged us to be ministers of reconciliation, to be bridge builders, to be peacemakers, not only in our homes, but in all of our relationships. And I'm just convinced that some people just like drama. Have you ever known anybody that drama follows them everywhere they go? And at some point, uh, as, a, as, a, as a sister say, baby, at some point, I hear y'all saying that. At some point, I said that a little bit too good. Didn't I? At some point, at some point, you're going to have to realize the problem is not everybody else. Satan is not after you. Some of that mess that you got stirred up in your life is there because of your own doing. If you had real peace, you wouldn't even know what to do with it. Because worrying for you is the way of life. Set of peace. I got to get to my illustration. Look what he says. He says, forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. And if he trespass against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day, this goes against all of my theory and all my logic. Because my, like, you got, give me one, shame on me. <laughs> shame on you. Second time, shame on me. And we stop right there. And Jesus says, they keep on doing it. This is some tough teaching, man. What's some tough sledding in this thing called Christianity? Jesus says they do it, and, and he's not saying literally 49 times, because some of us, we can't get two, and we're worried about 49. But he, what he's trying to say is if they keep on doing it, you've got to keep on forgiving them. Only a real Christian has that capacity, because they don't get it naturally. See, it's not a natural thing to forgive. The flesh wants to hold on to the grudges. The flesh wants to keep records. But you have to transcend and move into the spiritual realm to be like Christ in order to shake off those offenses that are thrown your way. And then he says, and if you trespass, you forgive him. And then the apostle said, I like this. Their first reaction was like, Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> Lord, this, this ain't an easy thing to do. Increase our faith. We hear what you're saying. And sometimes we're offended because we attach meaning to things that don't even belong there. Sometimes people say, where's Donovan? Come on, Donovan. Sometimes people say, sometimes people say, oh, um, oh, Brother Bailey, what do you mean by that? Or what if I, like Brother Campbell said something to me, and I said, um, Brother Campbell, what you mean by that? Brother Campbell, like, I ain't mean nothing. I ain't mean nothing by that. And we, we carry our feelings on our sleeves. You know, thin, thins. You, listen, you can't be a... Somebody says, I want to be a minister. I want to be a Sunday school teacher. I want to be a church leader. you too sensitive for that. I want to be a supervisor. You, you get offended with ladies down here. You get offended about every little thing that goes wrong in your life. Somebody. And see, y'all thought I said building offense, but I said building a fence. Or did I say building offense? You can stay up here, Donovan. You want to help me out? Don't try this at home because it might not work. Building a fence, building a fence. And I'm going to get to my, my, my uh, clothes here today. This is the best way I, I could think about uh, uh, this visual for you today. Um, I, uh, in my mind, uh, I thought, when I thought about this in terms of a fence, that they, they fall in a lot of uh, categories. And, and I, it happens you know, one, one plank at a time. You know, a lot of times, we, these walls that we build uh, with one another, they happen uh, one plank at a time. And, and, and it's, it's like, uh, you know, we talk about uh, walls and barriers. You know, the president wants to build a wall, but it, is that really necessary? You know, walls divide us. Uh, and sometimes when we think uh, when we're building a wall up, and a lot of us have walls built up within the church. Somebody says, well, Brother Bailey, what are you talking about? I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not up here just talking. There's a reason for me saying what I'm saying here this morning. Uh, in order for us to grow, we've got to tear down some of the walls that we have in the body. 
We've got to tell them some of the emotional walls that we have towards service, toward work. Somebody says, at my last church, everybody did this and this and this and that. How can you, even, even Jesus says, how can you come to church this morning? How can you worship, uh, bring your gift to the altar, and you know good and well when you came in here? How could you sit here and listen to me preach knowing good and well you hate me? You should leave. You should leave. How could you say, I hate Brother John Damian Johnson? And Brother Johnson, they're not even looking at me. They're looking at the back of your head. How can you, how can you sing in a group? How can you stand up there and sing in, a, in, a, in a, a song about walking in the light in a group full of people and you can't stand the people singing three, three, three rows down from you? How do you do it? How do you do it? And Jesus is calling us to, 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 to look at ourselves and examine, but we do it all the time. So what happens is in your life, I think the first one, Donovan, you're going to help me. This might not hold up, but you might have to, we mean not relationships, right? And you, you got, you, you got, a, you, Donovan's my brother. Donovan offends me. And so here he goes. Uh, he hands it to me. Uh, he says something to me. Go ahead. He hands it to me. Uh, and, 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 and he says something that bruises my ego. And a lot of stuff falls under the category uh, of ego. I'm about to mess up my little suit up here, but that's okay. <laughs> but, but a lot of stuff falls under the category of ego. You know what ego is? Ego is that part of you that, uh, that, what, that wants to, so I'm going to break it down simply. I don't got time to get into all of the Freudian, uh, <laughs> Freudian technicalities of it, but, but ego is the part of you that, that wants to be right. Uh, the e ego is a part of you that becomes easily offended when your identity, when the very uh, essence of who you are. You think about your ego. All of us have an ego, whether we want to admit it or not. Uh, she did. How could this happen to me? Does, does he or she know who I am? You shouldn't talk to your elders like that. You shouldn't talk to your supervisor like that. I'm your husband. I'm your wife. There's no way you should talk to your spouse. You shouldn't be cussing out your wife. If I'm your, I'm your rib and you treat me like just another everyday on the street, round the way girl, you shouldn't talk to me like that. That's, that's my ego being bruised. You know, they don't give me the respect that I, I deserve and I'm more valuable than this, and, and that ego, and I, I think about this, every time those offenses come, Jesus made a, uh, took upon himself the form of a servant, made himself of no reputation. God humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And can you imagine how we would be today if God had not, uh, had, had been led by his ego? Because some of us have, e y'all heard me say this thousand times, one of my biggest pet peeves are people who are arrogant for no reason. For no reason. So Donovan, Donovan takes it, and because he puts it on me, we're gonna you're going to have to help me with this, bro, because I'm about to get down and dirty with it up here. So he takes it. No, I'm not going to take it out. We're going to see if we can work it. So here we go. Come on, let's get this thing down in together. I feel like I'm in Corsican. <laughs> All right, let it go. Oh, we got it. We got it. And here he is with his uh, sister nobles. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vacuum this up after. So, <laughs> so uh, his ego. Now we're fine, right? We're communicating with one another. I know everybody can't see it, but there's a little bit between us because he's bruised my ego, right? Enough I can, I can see him, but now I'm fine. I fool with him a little bit, but then I'll say things like shallow things like, uh, I'm still a Christian. We Christian. I ain't gonna let him get to me. So we might talk a little bit, but we are off the surface. You know, we, we just be, really on the surface, no depth. And let me say this: I told this class this morning. Always realize that uh, all of us will have our hearts broken in our lives. Do not allow heartbreak to take away who you are. You know, a lot of us say I don't want to be vulnerable to nobody else because I've been hurt too much time. That's your ego speaking. Because, because you as a child of God, you have the love of God in you. Nobody can ever take away your capacity to love. Nobody can take away. Why would you give somebody that power? So it says, she hurt me before. That don't mean the next one's going to hurt you. So your ego's in the way because you've been hurt and, you know, nobody, who likes to be hurt? 
I mean, like, if I've been, you know, I'm the preacher of Cedar Valley Church of Christ. Who wants to be embarrassed by somebody publicly? But Christ was embarrassed. Christ, he allowed himself to be stripped naked. His ego didn't drive him. So here we go again. You're going on life and some stuff happens between you all. Here he goes and here we go. He's upset with his life and he doesn't, you know, I want, no, he can hand it to me. He gives it to me and now here we go. I got something else that I'm dealing with. Rejection. Who likes to be rejected? Have you ever been told no? Have you ever been better for the job and they give it to somebody else? Maybe you walking in there and you're trying to kiss your husband. He's like, get off of me. Is that too real? <laughs> Maybe you're trying to get your daddy to love you. He says, I don't really, he wasn't there for you. And you feel like, man, how could a man bring a child into the world and not even come around and see him? That's rejection. Oh, we all got to deal with some rejection, right? You, 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 you've gone to a church and you thought you wanted to get in. You're a new brother. And, and, and I also say this. I apologize for those things that happen that you can't always see. You know, because there are people who say, I was a new brother. I came to that church. I wanted to work. And those brothers were just territorial. I've been working in the church all my life. And they acted like I was a newbie in Christ. You feel rejected. When people aren't using your gifts, your talents. Rejection happens. Maybe you're a parent that's been reaching out to your child you're trying to show them love. You came from a good place. You know it is. You reject and You take that stuff and you build it up again. And here you go again. Let's go, Donovan. Back to Corsican. <laughs> Got to make sure it gets in there good and tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's that. Praise him. I didn't try this before I came here. What else we got? What was I trying to spell? Uh -uh. Okay. I was trying to spell family, but I spelled faily. The way y'all laughing is offending me. <laughs> no, 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 you know what, I like the real, I like when it happens in real time, it's a, it's a good time to make another point, uh, stop taking yourself so seriously, laugh at yourself, laugh at yourself, this is funny, Bailey, I think I was thinking about Bailey, and then, uh, I don't know why we write my name on the fence, but you know, isn't this a lot like life, you, you sometimes you just make mistakes, you goof up, and laugh at yourself. And let y'all laugh at me. It's okay. But family. Family is, is, is the close. Remember when Jesus, he went around his hometown, they kept saying, that, that's just Mary and Joseph's boy. The Bible said Jesus could really do no great thing in his hometown. He could heal a few sick folk. Because your family is your biggest source of your offense. Even in your family, you think everybody in your family is happy for your excess? Nah, they just want to leech on. They critical of you. They want to always bring you back down and remind you of where you come from. I know, I really know the real you. I ain't even doing nothing. What's the real you? What's the real me? I remember how you used to be. Well, I've been born again, bought in the blood of the lamb. I'm a changed person. I'm not who I, let me grow up. Let me grow in grace. Why are you still holding on to what I used to be? We do it in our home. Think about it. For some of us, our home is our most combative place. It's a bad thing when you got to actually leave the house to get peace. Family. Church family. People that are close to you. And then sometimes we're, we, we, we take on uh, the... One thing I try not to do is take on my siblings or my family's battles. I believe there's a point. In other words, just because my sister got beef with him, don't mean I need to have beef with them. Because I need to know the background. I ain't, I ain't just going to go, somebody says, that's loyalty. No, that's my, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to ride out. Me and my brother, we're going to ride out. This, we might end up in jail, but I'm riding with him. I ain't riding with you. I like freedom. You know, I want barbecue tomorrow. I'm not trying to be locked. You know, family to take us down because they won't let us grow. They won't let us be. They won't let us live our own lives. Let me be who I, let me live my own life. Then here we go. My old family experience. And who's, who's another? Ain't nothing worse. And I'll get to that when I, in the next one. And I'm almost done. Thank you, Donovan. Here we go. Let's make it happen. We got to go down and make sure it gets in here good. All right. Praise him. We almost there. This leads to betrayal. You cannot betray me as my enemy. Your enemies, you see them coming from a long way away. You identify them, you know who they are. If you're wise and shrewd, you've already spotted and identified their tactics. You already have prepared your countermeasures. You've prayed about them. You know how to deal with them. You try to avoid them, but your but betrayal is when she records your conversations in the White House. <laughs> and puts them on CNBC. When your fixer flips, who knows all your secrets. When you were close to me, as David said about hit the, hit the fail, we took sweet counsel together man of my own acquaintance. We had lunch together. I was opening up to you because I thought I couldn't open up to anybody else. And all the while I thought you made me feel like it was safe. That's, that's one of the things that's so devastating when a child, you look when Jesus talks about the millstone, when a child is abused by an adult whom they trust. That was your uncle. That was your yeah, that was your cousin, that was your brother, that was your father, somebody whom oh, a kid is not supposed to even think anything but safety. And, 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 and he's the one that protects me, or she's the one that looks out of me. And then you violated that. That is, that is a betrayal that runs deep like none other. What, what, why, why we call Judas, Judas as being one who betrayed Christ is because he wasn't a, a disciple. That's why it was a betrayal. He, he experienced... Not only what we, we saw in the scriptures, the teachings of Christ, but he understood how Christ acted. I imagine he knew what was funny to Christ. Uh, he watched how Christ treated people. He was there. He was around. He knew how Christ felt about children. He knew how Christ felt about the poor and the downtrodden. And then, you know, what made it so bad, all Judas had to do was just point Christ out. Judas walked up and put his dirty, nasty, stanky lips on Jesus and kissed him. Jesus said, a kiss? <laughs> you don't betray me with a kiss? I remember saying a while ago, though, if you just preach, you could, if preachers run out of stuff to preach, they could just preach the OJs, and there's a lot of stuff you could find. One of the songs they said, I think it's the OJs, says, smiling and, is that the OJs? Y'all help me. Y'all listen to the OJs? Help me out. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Smiling in my face. Yeah, yeah. You right there. Like you close. Brother Campbell, you can't stab me unless you are in arm's length. A lot of us have been stabbed, betrayed. That runs deep. That helps you to build up your fence. Building a fence. And then see the people around you. Check this out. Now, the people around you, they don't even know. I don't know everybody's history. All I know is how you act. But a lot of times, in order to find out why somebody acts, you've got to be able to be disclosed to the history of it. So that's why we got all these kids in the school. We label them as learning disabilities and, 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 and drugging them. And really, it's just the environment that they've come out of that has forced them to become that person in order to survive. I used to have kids, I'm like, this kid ain't paying attention. Wake up, sit up. And then after I talked to him a little further, he didn't have nothing to eat. 
Mom and daddy is not home. He figures out how to let himself out. He gets himself home. If he is home, mama is bringing all kind of men in and out the house around little so-and-so. And then she wondered why the daughter's in the street doing the same thing. Or well, all daddy, all son saw, this was a child. All he did, he saw daddy come in, get drunk, beat on mama. All these things people see on drugs, all in the street. And this is a little child who's not supposed to see all this stuff. All a child is supposed to worry about is who's on Sesame Street and what I'm supposed to have for lunch. A child's not supposed to be worried about how to raise the other siblings. A child's not supposed to worry about how to put mama in bed and make sure mama is, is washed up and clean up. But some of you had to do that. And you lost your childhood. Lost your innocence. And all of these things you kept on you and you now you built a fence. People are wondering why they can't get close to you. There was a song by John Mayer. I played it for my daughters. It's called Daughters. He says, fathers be good to your daughters because daughters will love like you do. Girls become lovers who turn into mothers, so mothers be good to your daughter too. He says, uh, he says uh, you see that skin? It's the same skin she's been standing in since the day she saw him walking away. Now she's left cleaning up the mess away. This young girl in the song saw her father leave her mother. And though she dealt with it because we adjust, it changed her whole life. And now here he is standing here trying to get this girl to love her, but she's still just the 11 year old who saw her father walk away and she can't even trust him because of how her father left her mother. Why do you think you have people when they come to your, the church and they, they, they're suspicious about things at the church because of where they come from? Brothers talking about other brothers. Sisters doing all these things. And when they come here, they're suspicious. I don't want to get too involved because every church I've been at, something is popping off all of the time. But trail. Trail sucks. Trail's not good. So, Donovan, you betrayed me, man. Cedar Valley, y'all betrayed me. You were close to me. I loved y'all. I was shouting y'all out everywhere I went. I'm like, you need to come to the valley. Isn't it some, something when you care about somebody and they don't care about you, you realize they don't care about you the same way you care about them? I'm almost there. Are y'all with me? Uh, where we at? This is a good one too. Uh, exclusion. Just, just being left out. Just being left out. Brother Campbell. I went to the lectureship and I saw the program. I saw all these scrub preachers on there and they left me off. I'm offended. I'm not going to any other sessions because they didn't even put me on program. trying to make a promotion around here and I've been working around here for a long time Now ego works at all this I've been working for a long time and nobody and I did and I'm brother Bailey hey I know he said he forgot to call me he knew he knew he knew he didn't forget he, uh, and then he, he, he had a little committee and he was trying to work up a committee and he left me off the committee he know I got the skills I got the talent I got just it don't feel good being left off they left you off. They left you out. You know, oh, have you ever found this? And this happens sometimes. I joke about this. But you know, when you realize that all of the members was over somebody's house, they was having a good time. And then you like, then you see the pictures on Facebook. You're like, I thought that was in this crew. I thought <laughs> they going live. Then you're like, oh, guess we're not that cool. They left me out. I ain't on the list. Because they wanted to get out the coronas. And the dos eques. And the gray goose. So I got excluded. Then in my mind, I'm like, but y'all know, I still was going to drink that smart water. I wasn't going to be worried about y'all. I just wanted to come. I just wanted a rib. And they left you off. They, le they left you out. Oh, well. 
Sometimes these can happen in the relationships closest to us, right? Anybody got a spouse that'll go get some food and come home and didn't even call you? I ain't saying my wife would do that. Ooh, I got this catfish. Have you tried this? Well, you guys, no, I got a two-piece. You can't have none of this. You just, you just left me out. But what about when your own members shout out their favorite preachers and you're not even in the list? Oh, my favorite preachers are boom, 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 boom. What? Oh, I, you know. Because then you got to stop your ego because your ego is like, oh, now they act like they don't know? Go ask brother so-and-so <laughs> to do A, B, and C, D. He can't. Okay, let me put this up. We almost there. We almost there. Mm. Well, this, this, this fence stands, Donovan. We gonna, you're going to be a legend. Is it on the news? Yes. And the last one. Last one. Last one. Is, uh, and I think this goes back to what Jesus was saying. In, uh, in look what he says in verse number. Uh, verse number uh, verse number three, he says, take heed of yourselves. It's about your perspective. And uh, this last one, uh, the, I say the nail in the coffin that really totally separates you, Donovan. Uh, I, I could see you. And I once could see you now, but I can't. There's something between us. I got to look over to see you. Y'all remember Mr. Mr. Al or Mr. Wilson on Home Improvement? All I see is the top of his eyes. And we're just looking at each other through the fence. I joke with, uh, with Sister White. I joke with Sister White sometimes. And sometimes in the office, there's a, script, there's a glass between my office and the office. And sometimes she's talking through the glass. Brother Bailey, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, uh, can, we, um, can we just open the door? <laughs> she knows this. It's a joke. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't, I can't hear you. <laughs> you know, but, but, but sometimes we have barriers in between us. Uh, and, and this is, some of y'all relationship look just like this. See, Donovan don't even know why I, don't, I, why I can't, why he can't even, I can't get to him. But I can see it. I know it, but I assume that he knows. And we once, we could t- cut each other, but now we have a, a barrier in between us. And then the last one is Perspective. Life is not about what happens to you. It's about how you view what happens to you. And that's what Jesus is saying. He says, he says that uh, take heed to yourself. Take, take heed to yourself. And I think I told you before that, that when Jesus says, if you have the faith the size of the sycamine tree, if you look at verse number six, I think I told you about that sycamine tree was a, was a tree that grew deep roots. Uh, it was a tree that would have been hard to eradicate. In other words, you can't dig it up easy. The roots grow deep and the roots grow wide. Then also that sycamine tree, in order for the fruit, the fruit to reproduce, uh, it would have to be stung by wasps. In other words, sometimes what causes us to reproduce these issues, bring them over again, every time somebody stings us, uh, we stack it on top of the, the sting that we had before. Also, we see that uh, the, 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 the sycamine tree produced a bitter fruit, uh, one that was hard to taste. And so when Jesus was saying that right here, look at this sycamine tree, he was trying to tell them a deeper meaning. That if you have the faith the size of mustard seed, you could say this sycamine tree, something that you think is impossible to eradicate, the, a fruit that's bitter. Uh, and then also, that was the number one choice uh, in that area uh, that they used to build coffins. In other words, there's nothing that will kill you faster than anger and resent. Y'all don't know it. Do the studies. There's some psychological effects of holding on to stuff, of holding on to grudges. And some of y'all are sick physically or going to become sick physically because of how your heart is. Because you're angry. You're looking at somebody and you're still mad. Somebody says, Brother Bailey, you mean to tell, I can look across this audience and I can say with all of the honesty in my heart, there's not a person in here that I look at with anger. Look at with animosity. Look at with hate. I ain't got time to hate on you. I got too much to do. I got enough working on myself to be mad at you. Matter of fact, the more you become like Christ, you have more pity and more compassion on those people who have put up these fences against you and what they realize is they're only hurting themselves. You're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself. Because God didn't put us here to be an island. 
God didn't put us here to be by ourselves. We were meant to, uh, to be interpersonal. We were meant to communicate with others. We were meant to, to experience love, to both give it and to receive it. Watch what happens to you if you're never able to give love. There's a part of you that dies. Some of you want to be in a relationship not because you just want a man, but there's a part of you said, I know I would be a good person to somebody else. That's natural. That's normal to want to receive love and give it. That's how God made us. God made us that way. But all you've experienced is just stuff, 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 stuff. That's stuff. And like I'm telling every single person in this room unapologetically that you, you have the capacity to love on a level which you don't even really realize you got. Can't nobody, can't no deadbeat dad, can't no drunk alcoholic father, no abusive uncle, no crazy church member that hates you, no, 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 no overbearing boss. Can't nobody take your joy. Can't nobody separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That stuff that's weighing you down, your losses, people you've buried, your hurts, your pains, your divorce, your sickness, all this stuff that you got. If I told you the gospel teaches us that all of us, when we were in Christ, we become new creatures. The gospel raises a man up. The gospel calls a man to a new higher order of thinking. The gospel allows you to put off those old things and put on a new man clothed in Christ. So what happens is the hate, the hate. Uh, the, the, the issues are, are there, but they no longer define you. So you got to change your perspective. How you seeing all of this stuff? All of this, get it right there, man. Ah, that would be a shame if we fell right now. All of this stuff, Donovan, you might have to hold me up. But all of this stuff. Just a little bit. Matter of fact, I probably could build a real long fence. I used to have to do this. It's hard work building fences. I know about that manual labor. <laughs> building fences, and you build a fence, and you just build a fence, and there goes your relationship. It's gone. It's gone. Somebody said, well, what did I do, Brother Bate? I, I hear what you're saying. I'm thinking about this, all this stuff, my ego. I've been rejected, and I could go on and on. But I, as I begin to thought, think about this, analyze the things that happen in our lives, especially when it comes to relationship, a lot of them can fall under this category. So I said, what, what did Christ do? What did Christ do? I want to look real quick what he says. Look what he says uh, in verse number, uh, verse number, I want to look at uh, verse number six. He says, you have the faith the size of mustard, you can say, until this sycamine tree be plucked up by the root and be planted to the sea, and it should obey you. In other words, you don't obey it. It obeys you. In other words, I, my, 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 my hunger obeys me. I don't obey it. My tongue should obey me. I shouldn't obey it. My response or my reaction to what you've done to me, I don't obey it. I shouldn't move around and be on the whim of it, get all emotion with everything, everybody. Say, we and Donovan, we once had a good relationship, but so much has been built between us because every time something happens, all we do is dig in deeper and we set up this wall and now neither one of us can grow. Neither one of us can prosper. And if all we would do is just humble ourselves and say, I was wrong. You were wrong. We were wrong. But God is great. Oh, God, God can restore, God can restore what you lost. God can restore what, what you messed up. So here's what I want to do. I want to ask God to forgive me. See, that's where it begins. You want to, you want to ask everybody else to forgive you and forgive everybody. But first of all, ask God to forgive you. See, we talk about uh, gratitude. When your sense of entitlement ends, that's when gratitude true gratitude can really begin. In other words, when you lose a sense of God has to do something for me, people have to be nice to me, we live in a cruel world. We live in a fallen world where, where Jesus described the wheat and the tares, they're going to grow together. We got to deal with it. But here's what I need to start doing. Here's what I should should do if it's, it's already there. As, 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 uh, as, as Donovan, you know, as I lose my perspective and, and something says I got to, someone says I got to throw it off. I just got to, just got to toss it around. At some point, I got to walk up and look at myself in the past and say, you know what, Donovan, I can't see you no more. 
And therefore, since I can't see you, I don't want to live life like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see this thing a little bit different. I'm going to see that you are truly my brother. And you are truly somebody I love. And we got more alike than what we have that's different. I don't care what, what you're saying. That's what's going on in the brotherhood. We've got brothers out here who are building fences. And they call themselves champions for the gospel of Christ or, or keepers, of the, uh, guard, keepers of the gate. But what they're really doing is building walls. I'm sound over here, but they're not sound over there. According to who? Who said you're sound? Matter of fact, who, who, where's your heart at? That's what God is dealing with. Where's your heart? You can preach a good sermon, but where's your heart? That's what God is going to... God is not going to judge me on how many sermons I can preach, how well I put them together homiletically, how well I can exegete the text. God is going to judge me on my heart. You can be a good preacher with a bad heart. I'm a bad, I'm a good person. Says who? I need to be approved of God. You claim that you're a good person and a servant, but when you leave out of here, you got all these fences up, all these planks up, all these barriers up, and you're just mad as you can be about life. You grew up, got older, but you never grew up. As y'all heard me say before, growing older is mandatory, but growing up is optional. Just that, it's just a child in a 48-year-old's body. I'm tired of this. You know what? Y'all go ahead and drink y'all those, those eckies. I didn't really need to be there anyway. And I don't, I don't want to be nowhere with nobody that don't want me there. You know what? My girls want me to go see this movie with them. Now, how about that? My wife want me to uh, smoke this brisket. How about that? My mama want me to come take her to breakfast. How about that? Worry about these fake friends. And when I see y'all at church, I ain't going to even ask y'all how, how it went. I ain't going to roll my eyes. On, I ain't going to even trip. If y'all ask me to go somewhere the next time, I'll go. Cause I ain't, that, I, I ain't gonna take it personal. Stop taking everything personal. Well, this is a tough one, man. I'm gonna forgive you. Jesus said it about us. The ones who he was dying for. He said, Father, forgive them. Why? Because they don't even know what they're doing. Hurt people hurt people. Your dad was a drunk alcoholic and you, you don't even really know the story of how he got to be in that way. And so he hurt you and now you're mad at him, but really you should be mad at the ones who, who raised him, who mistreated him. And it's just a cycle that never, 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 never ends unless you choose to throw it off. I'm not going to be my mama. I'm not going to be my dad. I'm not going to perpetuate the cycle by, by opposing on the others the same thing that was done to me. Throw it off. What about Faley? I don't have one for Faley. But God gave me this family. I can't choose. You can't choose who you were born. So well, I'm too light. I'm too dark. Listen. You can't tell me I ain't got the prettiest brown skin you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> right, Lori. I mean, <laughs> she's like, uh, but, but, but however God made you, he made you. I, I ain't trying to figure out how I can be lighter. Watch little Michael Jackson and then watch dangerous Michael Jackson. <laughs> Billy Jean, Michael Jackson, and then off the wall, Michael Jackson, progressively, he was trying to get lighter. He had everything in the world. Amusement park. Anywhere he went, somebody was screaming uh, his name, Michael, 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 and he had to take horse tranquilizers to go to sleep. I don't want that kind of life. Michael had some issues. Issues with Joe. So, fame, you say, I want more money. You think, you think in y'all's house, y'all arguing about money? Y'all ain't arguing about money. There's broke people who are in love. There's people who say, hey, we, don't, we don't even want a mortgage. We just want a tiny, if I can just be with you, that's all I want. Mm. 
You ain't got to buy me nothing. I don't need a ring. I don't need a house. I don't need no shoes. I just need you to walk in the house and just look me in the eye and say, I'm the only one for you. There's some real ones out there like that. You ain't got, there's <laughs> some real ones out there like this. Look at all our sisters like, that ain't me. You got to pay some bills. You got to do something. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no money, no honey. Let's not, let's get that correct. It's hard to be kissing when the light's off. I want to love on you, but I'm hungry. And I'm, you know, that's, that's hard. But you, you got to tell your mama, mama, I forgive you. Daddy, I forgive you. Y'all were doing the best you could. You were single parent, mom. I ain't going to hold this. I'm going to grow up. You know what? I've been rejected before, but successful people, uh, you know, people who, normal people take rejection, and they, they, they call it defeat, but successful people take rejection, and they turn it into fuel. That's why I keep my rejection letters. Not because I'm mad at that, but because I, it tells me to keep trying. Don't stop. Keep going. And, and that's, just, that's just helping me become who I need to be. All of us have got to, Jesus was rejected of men. Full of sorrow, acquainted with grief. Everybody didn't receive Jesus. They rejected him. Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. He, they rejected him. But you got to throw off that feeling of rejection. Nobody wanted me. Get over that. Christ wants you. God, as a matter of fact, that's a lot from the death. There's a lot of people here that love you and that would love you. You could have a relationship with if you just throw off some of these planks. We want to get to you, but we can't because you got all these defenses up. And are you still blaming everybody else? It's up to you. You put it up. You take it down. And the last one is you got to get control of your ego, your pride. Pride becomes from a fall, a haughty mind. All these things, it, it all begins with, 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 with pride, with the ego. If you can let go of your ego, if you can let go of getting, taking yourself so seriously all the time, you'll need to be right, being offended all the time, and, and, and be like our Savior, Jesus Christ. Then we can see that, that now we're me, there was once a, a bridge between me and Donovan. I can reach across the aisle, and I can tell you, I love you. Really? Man, I, I'm sorry. I've been missing out on a good friend. I'm sorry that I put this up. And it, you were sitting there trying to talk to me, trying to be there. But I had some issues. I let everybody else all my life, all this stuff on me, and I'm ready to let it go. But you can't do it without Christ. You can't do it without the help of your brothers and sisters in Christ. It took you a long time to build that fence, and you ain't going to get it right overnight. So somebody says, well, what, do you, what did Christ do? Well, just, just, you just got to take that, uh, I said, just take some of that stuff and, you know, I ain't nail it. Just think about him. <laughs> take some of those offenses and turn it, turn it into a ministry. Turn it into a ministry and, and hide behind the cross. Hide behind the cross. So I said, what I am not my circumstances. I am not my issues. I am not my rejection. I am not my loneliness. I am not my abuse. I am not my pain. I am not my resentment. I'm a new creature in Christ. And when you see me, I don't want you to see what I've been through. I don't want you to hear my hurts. I want you to see how I've been made whole by the blood of the Lamb. I want you to see what Christ has done in me. Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. And I want you to see Christ before you see all my stuff. Somebody says, I don't know how you're holding up under the immense amount of pressure. It's just the grace of God that I am what I am. I know I should be mad at mama, but I ain't even mad at mama no more. I can take her a plate of fish and I can rub her feet and I can say, mama, I love you even though you weren't there for me. But I'm going to be here for you the rest of your life. Monte, I don't hope that's anybody's name. Monte, you walked out on me and the kids. <laughs> Felt like that was a name that wasn't in here this morning. But Monte, you walked out on me and the kids. And you don't know how bad that hurt me. You know how, how bad your sons needed you there. You know how hard it was for me. I took the bus to work. 
trying to figure out how to get home to get the kids, couldn't afford to barely buy them school clothes. Other folks had to help me and step through with me, and, but I ain't even mad at you no more. Because by the grace of God, I done put them boys through high school. They done made it through college. I done found me a new man. He said he ain't never going nowhere. And he said if I go, he going with me. Daddy. He hide behind the cross. Remember when Joseph stood before his brothers? He started crying. Because sometimes it, it hurts to confront the people who harmed you. That, that you, you know, uh, thank you, Donovan. Appreciate it. Uh, I, know what you, I know what you thought you were doing. But I just want to let you know that I believe God sent me ahead of you to spare your life. And whatever you meant for evil. See, when that cross is in front of you, yeah. whoo, you can humble yourself and say, say some stuff. Yeah. Whatever you meant for, that's why Jesus said, if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. So what I'm telling you this morning is whatever I have done to you, yeah. forgive me. Whatever you have done to me, I should forgive you. You'd be surprised how many people go to church week in and week out and never, never have to address their unforgiven hearts. That's what this gospel is based upon. Christ loved us enough to go to Calvary to give himself for us that we might have a right to the tree of life, that we may have remission of sins, that we might be sanctified, justified, but most important, that we may exhibit these characteristics of Christ in our lives. The cross has made me what I... I thank God this morning for the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank God this morning for the power of the Holy Spirit to allow me to do supernatural things that I can't do on my own. Go to sleep at night. You can't, you can't control it. Stop worshiping your problems. Stop worshiping people and hide behind the cross. Hide behind the cross. Are you building a fence, literally? Or are you going to take some of that stuff and, and throw it off? Christ, Christ, Christ didn't take on that stuff. He didn't take on the stuff. He, he, rejected, he rejected the notion of being the victim, even though he had done no wrong. He rejected the notion uh, that, that he, had, he was too big to stay on the cross, even though he was God in the flesh. He rejected the notion that he should breathe fire down from heaven. How dare you? He rejected the notion, how dare they spit on my face with the saliva that I created? He rejected the notion. So, so one of the keys of growing is to how dare they do this to me? Why wouldn't it happen to you? Someone told me one time, and I believe this. Do you realize your story is not unique? That's a humbling thought because you like the, you've been carrying around this theory that you're the only one who's ever been through rejection. And what Satan wants you to do, he wants to move you into isolation to make you think that your life just happened in a vacuum. You're the only one that had abuse. You're the only one that lost someone. You're the only one that ever been rejected. You're the only one that ever been overlooked. And then, and then you take that person and your ego is at work. But Christ, I read that Christ was tempted with all points. All points. Anything you can think of, all points. That's why we should come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain help in the time of need. Is there anybody who needs prayer this morning? I know I'm talking to somebody. This might not have been a popular message, may not have been what you wanted to hear to come to church today. You might have wanted to shout, but now you got to deal with some stuff. But the only way you go, you don't realize how good you could feel if you just let go of stuff. Stop taking everything personal. Sometimes things just happen. Sometimes it is what it is. You can't go back and do nothing. Uh, or you can't go back and change it. And sometimes, you know, in Matthew chapter 18, go with Matthew chapter 18, Jordan, where I wanted to go. Sometimes you go to that person, and, uh, and, and in verse number 15, you go to them, you tell them the fault. Uh, sometimes they hear you, and you gain a brother. But sometimes you don't, they don't hear you. You've got to bring, the Bible says, bring forth a witness. And they don't hear you then, bring it to the church. 
But he says, you got you to gotta do it. You can't sit back and say, I, I, I'm just not going to say nothing. You're killing yourself. Somebody says, well, what if they don't forgive me? That wasn't your business. It's not up to you to worry about whether or not they forgive you or not. He just told you to go. He didn't say go and then sit around and wait for them to forgive you. That's on them. Three, most, three of the most powerful words in the English vernacular. I forgive you. Forgive you. I want you to sit where you are today. And is there somebody in your house? I want, I want everybody to close your eyes just for a second. Just close your eyes just for a second. Don't go to sleep, but close your eyes. We, we almost out. I told you, Aretha Franklin got all the preachers happy this morning. Like, ah, uh, you know, but, but, but I want you to close your eyes just for a second. And then find one person. Maybe they're dead and gone. Uh, maybe they're in your life. Find one person uh, that, that you just need to say, I forgive you. I, I, just to find one person, I want you to think, 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 really think about your life in terms of all the people, all the times. Think about how you used to be as a kid. You were happy and then life started hitting you. Then somebody rejected you. Somebody betrayed you. Somebody lied to you. Somebody hurt you. Somebody abused you. All this stuff is stacking on top of stacking top. You got older, but you never got to go back. Maybe it was somebody in your 10th grade classroom. Maybe it was your auntie who said you weren't going to be nothing. Maybe it's your mama who's still saying you ain't going to be nothing. Maybe it's your husband who talks to you like you're a dog instead of his spouse. Maybe it's a wife who doesn't respect you. And you're building up the fence. Can you in your mind and your heart right now tell them, tell God that you forgive them. Forgive them all. I know somebody says, I can't do it. There's power in the gospel. You can do it right here, right now. You ain't got to wait till you leave out of here, till you get in the car. You can forgive them right now. Forgive them for leaving you. Forgive them for hurting you. Forgive them. If you want to make it into glory, you've got to forgive it. Eternity, the weight of eternity is, is resting on your ability to let it go. Forgive them. Forgive them and change. Forgive them. Stand to your feet. Forgive them. There's someone who needs prayer this morning. Someone needs prayer this morning. Maybe there's someone after church who needs to walk across the aisle and say, I forgive you. Then when you forgive them, that doesn't mean you got to be best buddies. I can forgive you and still not go to Brahms with you. <laughs> don't mean we're going to Dairy Queen. But it means when I see you, I no longer, you no longer have power over my being, over my emotion. Because I'm not trying to build fences. I ain't trying to build walls. I want to love. Life is too short for hate. I love you. I love all of y'all. I pray that you love me. I pray that we just, we, just, we just display love one toward another. I forgive you. I forgive you, Brother Jacobs. You ain't even done nothing, but I forgive you before you even done it. You ain't done nothing, Sister Jacob, but I want to let you know I already forgive you. I forgive you, Sister Black. Sister Black has done nothing to me. But offenses will come. May come a day when she might, but I forgive you. I'm your brother. I love you. I love Brother Black. I forgive you. I don't want a fence between us. You're too good of a worker in the church. You're too good of a person. You guys are too valuable to the church for you guys to leave all because you and I can't get along. Because we can't sit and talk like mature people. We got to run out of the room like little kids. And take, I'm taking my toys with me. Take your toys in. But, 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 but that's the earthly side. The mature side said, well, hold on, hold on, let's talk about it. Why do you got to take your toys? Listen, let's compromise. You can have the Tonka truck, I'll take the Ken doll. We ain't got to fall out over no toys. Stop being mad at the church where you came from. Let them go. If you're here, be here. Why are you still mad at them? Why are you still mad at your ex? Y'all ain't been together 10 years. He married with 18 other kids, and you still mad at him. He didn't want you. Get over it. Sometimes you got to hear the truth square in the face. I don't, sometimes we sugarcoat. He don't want you. But God does. And there's somebody else that might, but God can't move you into the man of your destiny if you're still emotionally tied to the man of your history. And that works the same way in the church. You can't have be tied to the world and want God to take you to another level spiritually. It don't work like that. He said, you got to let go of it. 
You say, I want God to bless me and I want God to change my heart. He can't change your heart because you're still holding on. That's the part, as I said last week, you got to do. God is not going to let go of that stuff for you, but he will repair you once you let go. He will lead you to another place where you let go. I believe, I don't know what, who I'm talking about, but I believe God has done something with somebody in here this morning. I don't know who, who he's working on this morning. I don't know who he's working on. Who is he working on? I know who he's working on. He's working on me. It wasn't about you, none of y'all this morning. This was my lesson. I don't preach for you. I preach out of conviction. This is my lesson. I have to constantly throw off offenses. Somebody says, Why do you, how do you, how do you, do, let's think about it. The more people you interact with, the more chances you have of offense. Some of y'all don't get offended because as soon as we say amen, you're going, and then we won't see you again the next week. But if you're here on Sunday morning, Sunday in, after we dismiss from this place and we in the hall, if you're here during the week, if you're here on Wednesday night, come back on Sunday night, go to the church picnic, somebody's going to offend you. Say, so Brother Bailey, you ever been offended here in Cedar Valley? Plenty of times. But you, didn't, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it because why? I got to throw it off. I can't, I, can't, I can't afford to be the preacher walk around in my feelings. Got to throw it off. Well, who was it? That's the point. <laughs> I can't work with You got to work with people. You work with people who offend you. It happens all the time. And then sometimes they never come back and apologize. But, but I'm a bigger man than that because I serve a bigger God. And the Holy Spirit in me is bigger, greater than any offense that can come my way. We'll sing a verse of a song. If you need to come and you need prayer this morning, thank you for being such an attentive audience. We'll do so. We'll sing a song of encouragement. Oh, my tribes. Oh, all of my, all of my cares. Well, I can tell trials every now and then I get a little bit bird and low bird I, I get bird I'm so low I get full of care oh yeah and in the sorrows I say it's sorrows they wait they weigh my weak old shoulders down and they fill me up with death. But my God thought he knew. 
knows, but my God, my God knows, and His mercy shows, oh yeah, and I know it was only, 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 only Jesus that would lift me up. Through all, through all of my, all of my trials, all of my trials, sing it again, said that it was only, only G, and he lifts me up, up through all of my trials, all of my trials. Amen. Let the church say amen.